Hello viewers, welcome to another segment of Life and Family Assembly. I'd like to talk to us today about loneliness. Mm -hmm. To some people, loneliness means absence of people. But to some evolved beings, people that have evolved mentally, loneliness is a state of the mind. People can still be lonely in the midst of people, just around there, people can still be lonely. What are we saying? We're saying that loneliness is a mental condition and every right thinking society should do everything in their power or in its power to really make sure loneliness is at least ameliorated or reduced. You can't cure loneliness completely, but it can be reduced to a manageable standard. So what I was saying, what I was saying is that every government, every authority in charge of human affairs, even animal affairs, every authority, every institution in charge of people or elements or entities with intelligence, intellect, should do everything to reduce loneliness. I don't really see it as a mental health issue. But it's a normal condition that comes to people when they feel bereaved, when they feel afflicted, when they feel hopeless, helpless, when they feel sick, when they feel betrayed, yeah, when they feel unfulfilled. That's when loneliness begins to come, come in. So the society has to do everything to encourage people to get fulfilled, you know, to trust and be trusted and not to betray the trust, to get again full employed, provide social services, social amenities hospitals, schools, basic transports, you know, good roads, you know, those things, food, good shelter, clothing, those basic things, you know, nice schools, standard schools, and above all, security and social liberty. These are the basic tenets of governance, the basic expectations for, you know, for humanity to prosper. So we need to really do everything in our power to see that, you know, social welfare is institutionalized. People feel wanted, people feel accepted, people have a sense of belonging, you know? It's very, very important. By doing all this, we are reducing loneliness. By doing all this, we are taking care of loneliness. And if all these things are provided, then people still feel lonely. Then we need to think about spirituality, religion, and all those things. We need to see that we imbibe hope, that which gives them hope, you know? Spiritual hope, mental hope. Because there's an emptiness in the life of every man, the life of every woman, which only hope can fill. And that hope comes from having faith in spirituality or a power greater than us. Some people may call that authority God, may call that power God. Some people may call higher power, higher force or whatever. But I know that there's space in the heart of every woman which only hope, which only spiritual, which only faith can feel, no matter what you do. Money may buy you a house, but it cannot buy you a home. Money, money can buy you friendship, but it cannot buy you trust. Yeah. Money can buy you nice beds, nice cushion, or for strength, but it cannot buy you health. You can ask other people to do certain things for you, but you can't be, ask another person to bear your own sickness for you. So there's a lot of things we need to be reasonable about. Think about it. Who am I? What am I? When am I? How am I? After here, we are next. Why was I actually introduced in this era, in this age? Why do we, why do we exist between time and space? These are questions that threaten our willpower. But it is well. But how what we do that erases loneliness and instills hope and gives people a sense of belonging, makes people be wanted and accepted, makes people to contribute their own quarter, you know, towards social well-being, adding value to existence. That is accepted. That's okay by us. So we have to do everything in our power to see that we reduce despondency, hopelessness, we reduce ir irrelevance, we, re we reduce miserability. That, that makes people miserable. That makes, makes people, you know, inconsolable. 
that that makes people bereaved, that that makes people emotionally, spiritual, psychological, intellectually tortured. We have to do everything in our power to see that we, you know, reduce them, if not eliminate them. Government has a lot to do. The populace, the followers as well, citizens and the subjects still have a lot to do as well. Because when the hands of government washes, you know, joins with the hands of the public, washes together, then the hands can be clean. Security is everybody's business. When people feel insecure, they feel lonely, they feel tortured, they feel social and spiritually emasculated. They feel unwanted and, you know, you know, and undesirable. Liberty as well is very, very important. But let's let, let that liberty start from here. Mental liberty, emotional liberty, grown from emotional intelligence. Our emotional intelligence needs to be refined. Not necessarily quantitative, it has to be qualitative. Yes. Refine emotional intelligence. Could breed, you know, a mentally stabilized society. Let there be social agreements. Let there be concordance. Let us reach accord. Let us agree to disagree and disagree to agree. On vital fundamental issues like religion. And let us do everything that brings this unit among us. Like tribalism, racism, favoritism, dictatorship, tyranny, all those things. Man's humanity to man, apartheid. Let's do everything to erase them. Anti-Semitism, homophobia. Let's do everything to erase them from our lives, from our sides. Let's love one another. Let's care, you know, for one another. Let's love very respect of race, grace, sex, face, and lace. Let's just love for the sake of love. We are one or none. Because what is in any is in many. And what is in many is in any. That which you criticize in others is in us. So let us do everything in our power to create harmony, to create social order, to give people a sense of belonging, provide shelter for the homeless, provide job to the jobless, give permit to the permitless. You know, look after the single mothers, the, vulnerable, the women and the children, the vulnerable and the sick among us. Our ex-soldiers, that the veterans of wars and all those things. Let's do everything we can to rehabilitate the mental, psychological. Let's look after our psychiatric centers. Let's take care of people with mental health issues. Let's do everything we can to create hope. Because in the court of reality, hope is last to die. A hopeless society is sane. But the level of social dependency, in the indices of human development, you can see, the society or the government does everything it can to see that people are made to feel hopeful. Anyone that has a reason to live usually endures anyhow. So once you remove that ability to endure, that ability to be hopeful, that ability to be you know, expectant, then you destroy the social rubrics, the spiritual ingredients that actually you know, funnels or sustains life. Whatever you do, don't let people lose hope. Don't let them lose faith. When there's hope and faith, at least the engine of existence will continue to roll, no matter how slowly. So do everything you can to erase loneliness. By doing that, you have to instill hope. You have to instill faith. These two combined will produce social peace, mental peace, personal peace. And we give glory to our God. Thank you for hearing me again. Here, I rest my case. Happy Sunday, happy Sunday, happy Sunday. Today is 1st of um, August, yeah, 2021. We're transmitting live from London. Thank you, thank you.